black holes are some of the scariest objects in the known universe. But what are they made of and what lies beneath the event horizons? Of course, you can't talk about black holes without also talking about gravity. And therefore, we're going to start a little bit close to home, namely here on Earth. As a kid, you have probably been out playing ball with your friends and you would maybe also try to see who could kick the ball the highest. You would have an intuitive understanding that the harder you kick the ball, the higher it would go. So you can imagine that you could kick the ball so hard that it would leave the Earth's atmosphere never to return. Now the velocity where that happens is called the escape velocity. For the Earth, that is around 11.2 kilometers per second or about 7 miles per second. To put that into perspective, a 223 round fired out of an AR-15 travels at around 1,000 meters per second or 3,300 feet per second, which is less than 10% of the speed needed in order to escape the Earth's gravity. However, if we were to move to the dwarf planet Ceres, such a bullet would easily be able to escape the planet's gravitational hold. This is because the planet is a lot lighter. The escape velocity of a planet is determined by its mass and its radius. Now imagine we could shrink the Earth so it becomes smaller and smaller but would maintain the same mass. As we would shrink it, the escape velocity would go up and up and up. And if we kept shrinking it down to the size where it would be 9 millimeters in radius, at this point the escape velocity would exceed the speed of light. That means you need to travel faster than the speed of light in order to escape the planet. And nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, not even light. The radius where this happens is called the Schwarzschild radius, named after the German astronomer Karl Schwarzschild, who in 1915 were the first to provide an exact solution to Einstein's field equation of general relativity, which were published earlier the same year. It was as part of this work that he was able to derive the Schwarzschild radius for non-rotating black holes. But not only that, the same year he managed to publish another paper on quantum theory all while serving at the front in Russia in the First World War, where he helped with artillery ballistic calculations. So far in this video, I've been using the Earth as an example, but obviously black holes are not made out of planets. They are the result of a supernova explosion that happened at the end of the life of a massive star. When these massive stars reach the end of their life, they go through a phase where they will gradually burn heavier and heavier materials, and eventually the outer layers of the star is expelled, and the stellar core collapses in on itself. And we're left with this neutron-rich core that will either result in a neutron star or, for the heaviest of stars, where the core manages to collapse within its own Schwarzschild radius, we're left with a black hole. We can't get any information about what happens inside a black hole, so there's no way for us to know if the mass contained within a black hole lies just beneath the event horizon or is compressed into the center. Therefore, scientists will often describe a black hole as a singularity, a point in space with no physical size, only described by its Schwarzschild radius and its mass. So what are black holes made out of? Well, most likely they're just made out of normal bionic matter, just like what you, I, the Earth, the Sun and everything else is made out of.